maybe 15 years, 20 years, maybe my number is up there next to career. Too strong to be contained, Giannis Adetokounmpo. Keep playing with each other, come on, let's go. And here come the Bucks. Holiday. Got it to go! Life after Oladipo for the Pacers. People are not talking about him, but they're going to be an exciting team to watch in the East. Malcolm Brogdon and Demata Sabonis just having an unbelievable all-star type year. Brogdon lighting it up. Sabonis, score the foul! We have a lot of weapons. We're a really good team. Obviously, want to be at the end, the last team standing. You got to work for it. You got to hurt to get it. Oh yeah, this is a whole bop. Uh, we got the Bucks versus the Pacers at 7 p.m. on ESPN, and we brought our good sis Roz Goldon Woodey to talk about this matchup. Let's start on the Bucks side. Obviously, they're usually in a class of their own when it comes to the Eastern Conference. Right now, we got the Brooklyn Nets doing their thing, the 76ers doing their thing, the Celtics somewhere in the mix. Where do you feel like the Bucks stack up? Christine, the Bucks have their hands full because the Eastern Conference on a whole has improved due to an influx of talent and also the growth of young players returning to the conference. You know, that Nets Clippers game we were all watching last night, we knew the Nets could score the ball, but they showed that when they're locked in, they could defend at a high level and they deed up against a very elite, in the groove, contending um, Clippers team in a playoff type atmosphere, they showed up and held on to win the game. 76ers got an MVP candidate in Joel Embiid, but I'm more impressed. Well, I'm mostly impressed with that, but I'm also uh, further impressed with Tobias Harris's improvement and comfort. Ben Simmons looking comfortable in his own skin, regardless of what others say he has to do. And then you have one of like, the most young and dynamic duos in the league and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum glowing up before our eyes, I think it's going to be a dogfight coming out of the East, and I'm here for it. In order for Milwaukee to come out of the East, a lot of that burden rests on the godlike shoulders <laughs> of Giannis <laughs> instead of Kupo. <laughs> now, those shoulders haven't been working too well at the free throw line, unfortunately, shooting a current career worst 59%. How does that end up affecting Milwaukee down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, first of all, from just a macro level trend wise for Giannis, I mean, this has been happening over the course of five seasons now. Every year in the last five years, he's been decreasing his percentage from the free throw line. That's a terrible trend. Then you look on a smaller level into this season, and you've got Giannis Antetokounmpo, who takes a lot of free throws. So it's worrisome that he's not connecting. He's number three in the league for free throw attempts. He's getting there about 10 times a game, and you must make teams pay or else they won't defend you honestly and you risk becoming a liability on the court in times where they could use them. And then, of course, in the playoffs, you know, this is when this is when the Bucks have struggled and playoffs often come down to single possessions, execution, free throws. And you want Giannis at this point to be finding a rhythm and some confidence around the free throw line versus in the playoffs when the pressure starts to beat down on you. It's not going to get any easier when he's hanging around in the paint, and that's because Indiana fans watching right now being like, all right, get on with it. Talk about the Pacers. We're about to right now. Roz, <laughs> every team has their variation of the big three. Obviously, in Indiana, it's Sabonis, Brogdon, and Miles Turner, but not for anything he's doing offensively. This joker is leading the league in blocks per game, and he's doing it all with a fractured freaking right hand. He's like right. the defensive player of the year in a runaway so far, correct? I think he absolutely needs to be at, at the top of lists. Um, definitely 100% as a candidate. Um, and this is someone in Miles Turner who wants all the DPOY smoke. You know, this is someone who actually said, I've led the league in blocks and still didn't make an all-defensive team. Um, this has happened to him two years ago where he led the league in blocks. And you know how Michael Jordan was like in the meme, um, and I took that personally? I think that happened for <laughs> Miles. You know, like... This offseason, um, he worked on strengthening his hips, his lower body, his glutes, his core. Reason why? To increase his stability and strength, his explosiveness, and his ability to defend out of the pick and roll, not only against bigs, but also against perimeter players. He watched video of, of Kevin Garnett, Chris Bosh on the defensive end for that type of inspiration. He should absolutely be a defensive player of the year candidate. And he wants to be a catalyst for this team, and he wants the recognition. 
Uh, so G Money mentioned it. There's a makings of a big three in Indiana with the Pacers. But, I mean, they're still in a very competitive East now. How far do you think they can go? Um, I, I think this Pacers team, we're going to know a lot more about them in the second half of the season. Christine, don't forget that this is a team with a new head coach, Nate Bjorkren. That comes with learning a new system, a new language, kind of gelling and meshing. They lost TJ Warren to injury. This is someone who was breaking out in the bubble. You traded Victor Oladipo. You were hoping to get Karis LeVert back, but obviously, you know, he's out indefinitely, still recovering from the kidney surgery. So that's a lot. That's valid. <laughs> but in the, you know, in the midst of that, though, you know, Malcolm, Malcolm Brogdon has increased his scoring without decreasing his assist making. So that's key. He's creating for himself and others. So bonus, that's part of that big three. Having um, another all-star caliber season. Miles Turner, I mentioned his defense, but he also looks more comfortable on offense. And I'll give you an X factor. I think with the uh, kind of gap, on the perimeter from scoring that we mentioned earlier, I think this is a chance maybe for Jeremy Lamb coming off of that knee, perhaps to be an X factor here. But we'll know a lot more about the Pacers in the second half of the season. They have a lot of potential. So that's an X factor in the season. What's the X factor tonight? Who do you have, Bucks or Pacers? Well, I, I got the Bucks, but I, um, <laughs> I, I do think my eyes are going to be inside. First of all, all the talk about Miles Turner, can he be a, de a defensive player of the year? And he wants, he said, I want that award. Well, you're going up against the reigning defensive player of the year in Giannis. Not to mention Sabonis is doing work inside as well. I'll be looking in the paint this game to see what's happening. Oh, we'll see what happens. And we will see you next time on Hoopstrings. Thanks for joining us, Roz. All right. Thanks, guys, for having me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.